Good evening, everyone. The chief executive officer of the octopus card company Prudence Chan has rejected accusation by the lawmakers that she was lying when she denied selling the personal data of 1.9 million card holders to third parties. Ms. Chan has said earlier that the company had not sold any personal information to the cardholders to anyone. But later she backtracked and admitted that the company has earned 44 million Hong Kong dollars by selling the data. Ms. Chan insisted that the company has adopted what she was called a wrong definition of the word selling. Meanwhile, the chief executive officer Donald Zhang has said the government was very concerned about the controversy surrounding the octopus card company. Mr. Zhang, who was in Sichuan to oversee the earthquake reconstruction works funded by Hong Kong, he says he had contacted the privacy commissioner and hoped the special hearing that he did conduct would be able to find out what happened and prevent a similar incident from happening again. The Weather Observatory has received reports of at least three water spouts forming over Deep Bay this morning. Water spouts are usually a rare occurrence in Hong Kong, but this is the second such sighting in a week. A water spout was spotted off in Suicide Wan during the heavy rainstorm last Thursday. The Civic Party is launching a drive which it hopes will pave way for the scrapping of the functional constituencies. Party members met the Secretary of Constitutional and Mainland Affairs, Stephen Lam. Party leader Audrey Yu says they've begun the urging of the various groups to push forward a greater representation with the merging of the functional constituencies and the right of all eligible voters to stand for five new district council seats in the Legislative Council. The death toll from the Love Parade disaster has risen after 20 of victims have died in the hospital. The authorities has earlier raised the number of people injured in a crush at a German dance music festival to 511, including 43 seriously hurt and another one in the critical condition. The panic broke out at the techno music festival on Saturday in the western city of Duisburg near the Dutch border. Eight foreigners from Spain, Bosnia, Netherlands, Australia, Italy and China were among those killed. The German Chancellor has ordered an investigation into the tragedy. The Love Parade originated in Berlin with a population of 3.4 million has held in a giant park in Germany's largest city until 2006. Duisburg, the city that has held this event this year, has a population of 500,000. A suicide bomber driving a minibus then blew himself up in front of a Baghdad office of a popular Arabic news station early on Monday, killed six people and burying a former Deputy Prime Minister Salam Oysaway alive under the rubble of his collapsed home. The bomb was apparently waved through two army checkpoints leading to the station's office along a narrow street after security guards checked his identification, according to the Iraqi military spokesman Major General Qasem al-Musawe. No one has yet claimed the responsibility of the blast, but the Major General says the document has been found indicating that al-Qaeda was planning to attack the Arabic news channels and the other media office in the country. U.S. and South Korea warships and aircrafts practiced anti-submarine maneuvers over the Korean Peninsula on Monday that the military hoped would serve as a warning to Pyongyang if the aggression in the region would not be tolerated. Meanwhile, the North Korean capital Pyongyang, a senior military official, threatened to mobilize his country's military and its nuclear deterrence to wipe out any military aggressors. The nuclear-powered supercarrier USS George Washington was among the vessels taking part in Monday's exercise, which comes in the wake of international investigation which blamed the North for sinking South Korea's warship, the Kyongnan, killing 46 sailors. U.S. officials says the maneuvers will help their way from the North Korean's border, are not intended to provocative a response, although they do want to send a message to Pyongyang that further aggression in the region will not be tolerated and that the alliance between the US and South Korea remains strong. Recapping our headlines tonight, the chief executive officer of the Optimus card company Prudence Chan has rejected accusation by the lawmakers that she was lying when she denied selling the 1.9 million cardholders' personal data to the third-party companies. 
The Weather Observatory has received reports of at least three water spouts forming over Deep Bay this morning. Water spouts are usually a rare occurrence in Hong Kong, but this is the second such sighting in a week. And a suicide bomber driving a minibus blew himself up in front of the Baghdad office of a popular Arabic news station early Monday, killed six people and burying the former Deputy Prime Minister alive under the rubble of his collapsed home. So far, no group has claimed responsibility. And finally, to the weather now, it will be cloudy with rain and a few squally thunderstorms. Rain will be heavy at times overnight and tomorrow morning. Temperatures will range between 26 and 29 degrees. Moderate southwesterly winds occasionally fresh, becoming fine and gradual in the following couple of days. Now in Hong Kong is 28 degrees with a relative humidity of 87%. So that's all from the DHK News team for now. I'm Ivan Leong. Thanks for calling in. Good night.